Life on this side, I'm here with my guy Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk, tell them who you are. I'm a 24 year old actor and model in Los Angeles, California. Nice, now with that being said, what do you want out of everything that the actor life has to offer? What do I want? Um, I want to make money off of acting. I'd love to be on television as a series regular, you know, a lovable character that uh, I get paid good money to show my acting ability and have fans that really appreciate what I do. So that's what I'm going for. So uh, you're, you're choosing TV over the movies? Yeah, I would choose TV over the movies because I would say it's a more consistent paycheck for one and because I feel like you can showcase more of your ability through television than through movies. Um, have you heard of the house, uh, I'm sorry, The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix? Yeah, I have heard of The Haunting of Hill House. That's one scary fucking show, bro. Yeah, it is. And it's on a streaming service, like we said, right? It's on Netflix only. Right. Now, if they were to uh, make that into a movie, I would still enjoy it, but it's been grabbing my attention for a week straight. No, so I see what you're saying. No, that's awesome. And the fact that um, horror, horror in general, you know, how many horror TV shows had there been until recently like not a lot right it was kind of like a movie only type deal you know an hour and a half two hours you get scared you go home i think that's like this perception that horror must be just not that serious yeah it's not and serious. not worth the time but shit yeah and I, you, I love that one and you hear about a lot of people like coming up off like independent horror movies or like that's like their first ever thing where they get like chopped up by the the murderer in their yeah. first ever role so uh horror is big um i've actually never done anything horror related that I can think of right no but the reason why I brought that up is just to say that um, I agree with you me as a filmmaker I'd rather just put out my own content straight to consumer I would like to have my own network in which mm -hmm. I can do that but even if I, I went the mainstream route and you know one day I'm on Netflix or I'm on uh, any kind of streaming service right? all these streaming services as long as my work is being watched and appreciated, I can't complain. Exactly. The only slight complaint that I have is the audio being that I know most people watching it on their on their cell phones are not going to take the time out to go put in those Bose earbuds. headphones and really appreciate it. <laughs> and I don't like that. But other than that, I have no complaints. Yes, yes. A lot of people, they uh, they feel like, you know, Hollywood is slipping away or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. But they're wrong. No, you hear that all the time. And... It kind of brings us to that conversation about like television versus movies and about how a lot of big name actors are going more towards television because it gives more of an ability to tell a story and to show your range and to show that you can play a character for four, five, six seasons, you know? Right. Like, like this new Apple TV show has like Steve Carell and, you know, I guess like The Office is the other TV show he was on. But, what did you uh, say? Apple TV show? Apple TV. Wait, what? They have their own streaming service now. They have uh, four original shows or maybe more coming out really? like, in the next couple months. Wow. It's impressive, right? Well, we're shooting this on March 28th, 2019. Yep. 2019. So if this comes out later and I'm looking stupid because the word already got out. <laughs> and I actually have a friend who I work with. Um, his name's Sean, and he just had a scene with Steve Carell in the new Apple TV TV show. Man. Awesome. You think Apple could com can compete with Netflix? Oh, yeah. It's Apple. I mean... I mean, obviously, so what do we have for the major streaming services? We have Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, uh, Hulu and then I guess, like, there are some other, like, ones uh, That's out. the ones that count for Yeah, they're the ones that count. But I think Apple could 100% be up there, especially with, if you look at the lineup, like, you should look at it after this, like, the lineup of shows they have with the actors they have, very impressive. Mm, amazing. Um, <clears throat> are you looking forward to, uh, wait, have you seen Us? Yeah, I saw Us. How'd you feel about it? I, I loved it um, man I was it's funny because I didn't think it was like that scary yeah but, uh, that shit was creepy my, as fuck. my girlfriend Vanessa she was straight shivering like she couldn't yeah. even leave the, the room after right <laughs> very impressive though um, Jordan Peele um, we were kind of talking about this previously he's coming out with a new Twilight Zone a reboot on CBS All Access which is another streaming service oh shit yeah, yeah and I was a big uh a Twilight Zone fan growing up. My parents used to watch it all the time and I love the twists and like the whole style, the whole setup and having like Jordan Peele as the as our host, as our Rod Serling. So it's gonna nice. be really, really awesome, man. I'm I'm waiting for that. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Uh what's a perfect day for you just man. when you're not working? When I'm not working. 
A perfect day for me right now would be to work. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Isn't that the struggling actor Amazing. answer right there? But um, man, a perfect day for me is just getting out in Los Angeles. Like, I don't know if the audience can see how beautiful it is up here, but um, man, this you you won't find this anywhere else. That's for sure. Let me work on this. Yeah. Okay. There we go. We got this nice view right here. Yeah, we got a amazing so i guess a perfect day for me would be hitting the beach uh driving around hollywood west hollywood uh getting some good food the food out here is endless and yeah beyond tasty as you know obviously yeah man yeah and uh what year was that that you guys all went out to palm springs that was man it was like the beginning no was it wasn't last year I don't know. Two years ago, I think. Might have been 2017. Yeah, right? it feels like a long time ago. I've only been out here two years, but um, Palm Springs, that would be a perfect day for me. But we got to wait till June, July when it's like 115 degrees. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's when you have to hit Palm Springs. <laughs> and yeah. we got to go to Palm. You went to Palm Springs also, didn't you? Yeah, I went there last, uh, last August. And you had a great time, right? It was amazing. But this time, I think I'm just going to do like Laguna Beach or something. Yeah, Laguna Beach. But Palm Springs, is there's something unique about the... The way the humidity it looks in the and air. the humidity. <laughs> and the yeah, it looks like it's like straight some, out of like the 1950s, like 1960s, you know? It's some of the best mangoes I've ever had in my <laughs> life. Um, Harth, would you say when you planned to come to L.A., was it harder expected or or, or easier than what you... Do you get what I'm saying? Like, No, what, I, I do, I do. Was it easier or harder or was it just what you expected? So... For me, like, I guess I kind of planned when I, when I decided to come to L.A. that I was, like, here for the long run. You know, some people, I think, come out here and they just assume, like, one year in, like, they're going to be on TV. Or two years in, they'll, they'll get their, the role of a lifetime. Three years in, you know, they'll sign the record label or whatever. You know, whatever your personal goal is or aspiration. I think people assume that they're going to just knock it out in, like, the first year or the first six months. Right. But something for me that I realized, like, from very early on from being in college was that if I moved out here, I was gonna be out here, you know, until I made it. And I knew that I knew that acting success, unless you're the best actor in the world or the best looking actor in the world, doesn't come instantly. Right. So I knew I was gonna be in for a grind. So in that regard, I would say that it was exactly what I was expecting. You know, I'd, I'd never actually been here before, before I moved out here. Right. Um, so it was new and it, it took me a little bit longer to get acclimated than I thought and to like find a job and to like understand how the city worked and like how big it was. But um, I think that I prepared myself mentally that that I wasn't going to make it immediately and that I was going to take the necessary steps to get to where I wanted to be. And that's something that I take pride in. Right. So <clears throat> you have actors that invest in their self, mm -hmm. in themselves, like, for example, and I know you have uh, you have experience with this as well, right? Where you just put up a budget, shoot your own web series or shoot your yes. own film, put it out there, make a name for yourself. Very right? familiar with that. Then you have the other route, which is the traditional route of going to uh, auditions and going to and like trying to get uh, an agent, a manager, and everything managing. like that. I know you're managed, and you have an agent, right? Yes. Okay. So is your agency the one managing you, or do you have two? Uh, so. I'm signed commercially for print, for modeling, and like theatrically, I guess, which is TV and film, to Maverick Artist Agency. And they take care of me in terms of like getting me auditions for pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. But what my manager does, uh, Brent, uh, with Creative Artist Management, he kind of like guides my career. So he'll get me auditions also kind of like an agent would. But he, if I, my materials aren't up to date, or like if I have clips or I need clips, he'll kind of be the one that to tell me like, Tony like you need more dramatic clips like I was telling you earlier or yeah. like Tony you need to like update your resume or Tony we need to get you on this or that or like your look is more suited towards this so he kind of gives me that advice yeah. where the agent kind of just gets me the auditions they don't give me advice you know do you think that it's possible to do it without the manager and agent or do you have to have them it is possible to do it without the manager or agent. So I booked I booked my first commercial without a manager or an agent. I just oh yeah, what, which commercial was that? Uh, that was for Lithia Auto Parts. It was nice. I popped out of a hot tub. Oh yeah, I, I remember that one. Shook two people's hand and I got paid like two thousand dollars for it. And, amazing. Um, amazing, I know for one day of work. And um, I booked that all on my own. But if you talk to a lot of up and coming TV stars or whatever people who regularly book on TV. They'll tell you that it's not necessarily the agent that'll get you the job, but it's your connections with the casting directors. 
So you could take a whole bunch of workshops with casting associates and casting directors, and they won't book you off that, but they'll remember you and bring you in. And I think that you, you don't need an agent or a manager to book stuff with casting directors. As long as they know you, they know you can act, and you fit the role, I think you have a good shot. Nice, nice, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what, what would you say is the biggest obstacle of booking? A booking or commercials acting or, or auditions, just everything, just overall as an actor. I think the biggest obstacle is just being patient when it's not going fast. Um, that's something I always struggle with is like, I'm looking at my email like Monday through Friday, like, can I get an audition? Like, da 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 da. Yeah. And it really stresses me out that it doesn't happen as fast as you want it to. And if all these people are like, it's pilot season, like, there's a million shows being created, like, you gotta get on one, da 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 da. But I honestly feel like just being patient getting your materials in order, understanding who you are as an actor, taking your classes and just like constantly working out your brain muscles and working out your acting muscles to stay sharp for when that opportunity does come is like the biggest key. It's the biggest key and the biggest obstacle because it could hamper you because you're like, oh, you know, I haven't had an audition in a month. Like, why am I even doing this? I need to stop trying, da, da, da. Or you can be like, I haven't gotten an audition in a month. I need to kick it into gear, I need to get in these classes, I need to get these clips together so I can get more auditions. So it's a lot about how you look at it, but for me, you know, I, I don't allow obstacles to get in the way of like my mindset or of like what I want to do, because I know what I want to do and I know how to get there. It's just about being patient and letting, letting everything fall into place for me. Okay, okay. So. <clears throat> For anyone looking at your lifestyle and just um, kind of just watching you move through social media yeah. and they're considering doing the same thing, moving out to L.A. and just pursuing it, yeah. and, um, what's the main piece of advice that you would give to them? And I'm going to plug my vlog real quick. My vlog talks about this. It's about coming out to L.A. and yes, about what you can do to make your own content and to stay busy. But um, my, my biggest piece of advice is like I was talking about already, don't expect it all to happen at once. But something that's big for me that a lot of managers and agents will tell you is to get into class. Like if you aren't taking classes, you're never gonna get to the point where you're gonna be on TV or you're gonna be in a film or Wait, really? any of that stuff. You, so a lot of A-list actors have taken acting classes? They've taken classes for longer than you could ever imagine. Wow, how come they never uh, shout out their class or put anybody on? Why Some of so them quiet? do actually, like do? for example, um, James Franco, he, he was at Playhouse West and I forget the name of the owner, but he basically like let James Franco take the classes for free and he was like, I'll know you'll pay me back in the, fe in, like, the future when you make the money and he eventually did. So there are a lot of big studios and they'll actually like, one of their biggest marketing tools is shouting out the actors who are successful, you know, who made it through their acting. So um, maybe just because you're not a part of like the actor community, so you don't see it as much. Mm -hmm. But um, there are places that are, like Jennifer Lawrence trained here, or like, you know, for example, Groundlings, which is the big improv uh, place here in Los Angeles. Like they had like Will Ferrell, you know, and they're always like Will Ferrell went here, you know, da 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 da, take Groundlings because Will Ferrell, you know, so. You know, taking classes is big and, you know, it's like if you want to go to the NBA, right? You wouldn't go to the NBA if you never dribbled the ball before. Right. You never took a jump shot before. No one ever taught you how to do a crossover. So it's one of those things, like, you got to build up those skills because this is the big leagues. Like, this isn't Chicago. This isn't Atlanta. This isn't New York. Like, this is Hollywood. This is home of TV and film. Everyone wants to be an actor. So training just gives you an advantage and casting directors will only bring you in if you have training with reputable people. How about those who try to say, uh, well, this place right here is the new Hollywood or, you know, over there, Atlanta, Charlotte, I've Ohio. Heard Atlanta, Atlanta. Ad that's the main place. Everyone's like, Atlanta's the new Hollywood. And although things are filmed in Atlanta, I can't deny that. Like Walking Dead, for example, is filmed in Atlanta. Um, it's not. Come on, guys. Like, let's be honest. Like, yeah. look around you. Like, this is Hollywood. Like every place has something to do with entertainment or acting like there are these studios that are billion dollar studios that have a hundred sound stages like fake neighborhoods like <laughs> you don't find that in atlanta you know right so to someone who says that i mean sometimes i even wish i'm like oh man like if i was in like chicago i would kill it you know a small market where i can just like be the big fish but 
being the big fish doesn't being the big fish in a small pond doesn't do it for me. I'd rather eat slowly, eat the little kelp slowly and yep, get bigger yep. and bigger in the ocean, you know, until the point where I'm I'm a big whale, as they say. Absolutely, man. Harv, thank you for coming through. Of we'll course. talk to you again soon. Yeah, thanks so much.